By the time I got to Mexico, I already had all the political reasons to leave. I met an American woman who had lived in Mexico for many years. This would be October of 1967. And at dinner, she suddenly went into a tirade about Che Guevara because he had just been killed. He'd been captured and executed. And it was just out in the papers that day. And so she was furious. She went into this tirade about this horrible, stinking CIA that had murdered the best hope for Latin America uh, in generations. And she, was, she loved Che Guevara. She thought he was the most wonderful man in the world. And I was in love with her, and she was in love with me. And I thought to myself as I sat there at dinner, I said, wow, what am I going to do? And so the upshot is that she was the personal factor who, which led me actually to say, I'm quitting now. The case against the CIA has always lacked information on how precisely its officers set about their covert action. Philip Agee, now living in Cornwall, was such an officer. And his diary, to be published by Penguin in the next few weeks, gives his version of what life is really like inside the agency. He names every officer and agent he's ever met and describes a CIA man's work in daily detail. Why should I be delicate with them? I don't expect any, any, uh, any quarter in return because this is part of the conflict that's going on in the world right now. The CIA is enforcing American economic exploitation and people are dying and people are starving because of this system. In actual fact, what had happened is Henry Kissinger had intervened secretly with the British government to force them or pressure them to uh, deport me and to cause me all these problems because not only was I deported from uh, Great Britain, but that was followed by a kidnapping and deportation uh, by force from France, plus uh, Holland and Italy and Germany and Norway would not let me in, and so over a two-year period, they were constantly pressuring these governments, which had no propagation from me at all. So uh, they tried very hard uh, during a period of time in the 1970s to stop my work, but I just continued, got on with my life, and um, uh, achieved stability in Germany, and um, now, in the last seven or eight years, I've been coming frequently to the United States, and I think I've been in practically every nook and cranny of the country at hundreds of meetings, uh, political rallies, and university lectures over these last eight years. When I was a kid, the American flag was something absolutely marvelous. Whenever the American flag went by in a parade, we took our hats off, put our hands over our hearts, and we really felt it because this is, this is the symbol of the United States and the way the United States should behave. We have to have something like that in order to hold ourselves together. In those days, the Depression was really seriously affecting everybody, and me too. Along about that time, I began to travel to different shooting matches in the Midwest, and I, I finally got to shooting against the U.S. Marine Corps team. And I used to beat the Marines, every one of them, and, and the, the captain of the, of the Marine team came to me and said, Son, he said, have you ever thought about enlisting in the Marine Corps? And I said, No, Captain, I never have. And he said, <laughs> he said, Well, I tell you what, if you would enlist in the Marine Corps, when you're finished the training in Paris Island, I'll see that you're assigned to the Marine Corps Rifle and Pistol Team. And I said, geez, you know, I'll be getting paid for shooting. I was scared stiff, of course. And we went up there and went in the, the, uh, the Commandant of the Marine Corps' office. So he said, well, this young man is, is, is a specialist in marksmanship training, and we would like to commission him in the Marine Corps. And I said, commission? Oh, my God. He says, We've never done anything like that before. A commissioned man from civilian life. He said, well, sir, I think this is the time to do it. He scratched his head. He said, I think you're right. Young man, you're a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps. I said, oh, my God, this is terrible. I went through World War II as an officer of the Marine Corps, came back, and one night the doorbell rang, and I went, here's a natalie dressed man in his, his uh, nice suit and a snap brim hat, and he said, uh, may I come in? And I said, well, I think you better identify yourself. Uh, who are you? Well, he said, I know who you are, and I mean, you've been recommended very highly to uh, to our organization. I said, what's your organization? Well, I'm not at, at liberty to tell you what the organization is. And I said, well, this is crazy. So the, he I said, well, come on in. He was a little guy, and I thought I could handle him pretty well. And I said, you have been you have been accepted in our organization, and we want you to go to Central America. And I said, what? Central America? Come on. So that's how that's how it happened. And then I, 
I joined this, this group that went to Central America, and uh, I, I, I found out that I was, I was supposed to be in charge of overthrowing a government in Central America. And, you know, that, that, it, does, it doesn't sound right. And I said, well, what's the government? Well, we don't want to go into it too deeply here yet. I said, well, I think maybe better forget the whole thing. Oh, no, 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 it's not very important. So finally, he did let out that we were going to overthrow the government of Guatemala. Well, now, I had been to Guatemala before, several years before that, because I was a, a member of the U.S. Olympic team, and, and we were requested to go down and, and help organize the games, the Central American and Caribbean games. Doves are released, living symbols of the peace and friendship among the 22 nations represented. So I knew people down there. I knew this gentleman by the name of Arbenz. And the CIA was going to have me overthrow these friends of mine. Well, they explained to me that this is extremely important to the security of the United States. When they pull that, you know there's something wrong. Because the United States is so secure, and nobody's ever going to do anything to it. Anyway, so I said, well, okay, I'll do it. And we organized uh, a group of, uh, of, uh, of uh, dissident uh, Gu Guatemalans, armed them and trained them minimally, and sent them off up to, to uh, overthrow the government. Mm -hmm. 